Hi guys, it's Donna from Donna Gales Designs and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made this pen. As always, everything I use in today's video will be linked down in the description below for you guys and you may find a discount code or two there for you along with my links to my social media if you want to follow me there and also I now have a link in the description if you want to join my new mentorship group which all of my templates are free to my members there so let's go ahead and get started so I started out by removing this sublimation pen let me first explain why I'm using a sublimation pen whenever there is a lighter color in my pen such as white. Instead of painting my pen white, I'll just go ahead and use a sublimation pen so I can skip a step. So I started by unscrewing that tip, taking that barrel off, screwing it back on, putting it back in the packaging for later. And then what I like to do is to lightly sand my pen and then spray it down with some rubbing alcohol and wipe it down with a paper towel. Now, if you want to use a stainless pen, you most certainly can and then just spray paint it in one of the colors that's in your design. So we're gonna start out with the first row, which I like to call the anchor row. And if you get this row super straight, chances are the rest of your rows will also remain um, super straight. So I like to put 12 stones around my pen and then I just evenly space them. And then you, I'm following the template for this. I'm calling it an infinity pen. It's kind of like a weaved pattern. I kind of got that kind of feel from it. Um, and this template is available on my website and that link is in the description below for you guys. So like I said, I'm just following this template I made. Um, I have received a couple of requests. Um, I only have one more that I need to upload, which is done. I just have to edit the video for you guys. And so that one should be up um, fairly soon for you guys. Um, so what you see me now, I've got my 12 stones on the pen and now I'm using the metal end of my round stone picker just to push those stones down so they're flush with my table so they are straight. And then I let that dry for about 30 minutes before moving on to my second row. For my adhesive today, I am using some liquid fusion in this syringe with an 18 gauge tip. And then I'm just going to apply my stones and I like to do the honeycomb method on all of my rhinestone pens. And all that means guys is I'm putting one stone in between the two previous stones. And then that's it. And then you want to make sure that you're putting your rhinestones flush up the previous row. You don't want to have any gaps or anything like that. And you see me using this squeegee you now. The reason why I like to use the plastic end of my squeegee is it ensures that I'm keeping my row straight. The only thing is if you do use a squeegee, just make sure you're not applying too much pressure because you'll move your stones since they aren't set yet. And you know, you may push your stones up too far. So you only need very light pressure to just make sure that all your stones are even. Now you can kind of see here how the design is starting to take effect. Um, and this really came out pretty. I picked these colors because my mom's favorite colors are orange and yellow. So I'm making this pen for her as a gift. So, um, that's where I, I came up with this design and these colors were. Now the rhinestones I'm using today are from PDB Creative Studio. I have their link and discount code for you. Um, in, in the description below. The colors I'm using for the orange is Bengal, the white is alabaster, and the yellow is citrus. And as I get down to this middle pen, you can really start to see um, their design really starting to take effect. And I don't, I don't believe in putting any kind of filters or anything in my videos. Um, I never have, I probably never will. And as I'm turning that pen around, um, I have a very high ceiling in my living, room, which is where I'm making this pen. Um, and I just have the lights on. So that sparkle and shine is, is true. You know, it, it's just reflecting off the light on my ceiling. Um, so we're getting, you know, down to our last few rows. And I have a couple tricks for you. When you're getting down to your last few rows, if you pushed your stones up too far, either being with a squeegee or um, 
the middle end of your picker. Now is the time before you get to that last row or two where you can kind of try to even them out. So just kind of pay special attention when you get to like the third or fourth row from the end because that's where you can kind of visualize, you know, if they are still staying straight or if you need to kind of maneuver it a little bit. And you know, sometimes I usually do that if that happens to me. It doesn't happen that often, but if it does, you know, even toward the middle of the pen, you know, start kind of finagling that if for some reason um, your rows weren't straight. Um, when I first started making rhinestone pens, I did have that issue, but I've been doing them well over a year now, so I really don't have that problem anymore. But if you're a beginner, you know, that's how you can kind of even it out, you know, in this way, if you do it gradually like that, you know, you're not really seeing a difference. And you're probably going to be the only one that can tell that, you know, so, and then when I get to that last row, um, I believe you'll see me do it in this video. I just like to take either my finger or, um, the metal end of my rhinestone picker and just put it flush with the end of the pen, just to make sure to see if you need to push any stones back. So they're not overlapping the end of that pen. Um, so that's just how I like to. And if I ever have tips and tricks for you guys, I will always share them with you guys. Um, I just, you know, like to help other people, you know, who are creative and, you know, things like that. So we're going to do this row and then there will be one more row, I believe. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, if you feel you can't fit another row, just kind of space out those last couple rows and you really won't you won't really won't tell a difference you know so as we finish this up you know i let mine dry for at least three days before i wash them and the way i wash mine is i have a very soft bristled nail brush i use that with a little dish soap and warm water just to you know get off any wax that may have gotten off from my rhinestone picker and then i let it air dry until it's dry before packaging them up and putting them back together and to put it back together all you do is unscrew it put the barrel on screw it back on i do have the information here for my new mentorship group i just wanted to list the benefits here for you guys if you guys strictly follow me for my rhinestone pens all of my templates are available free um, with your paid uh, membership to this and we have our own private um, facebook group that i will be doing videos and stuff in there as well and lives so if you want to join that that link is down in the description below for you guys and i want to thank you so much for watching my video today and all of my videos you guys are great and always supporting me so thank you so much and i hope you all have a fabulous day